and welcome back everybody so for this video lecture I want to talk about dispersion so this is really the last process or maybe the most important process that we'll talk about uh, for these you know basic introductory lectures on transport and the important uh, processes mechanisms by which mass is moved around in groundwater and now I'm taking us all back to our very first course, so the course on groundwater cycle and the introduction of uh, aquifer properties. Uh, and if you remember these um, plots on heterogeneity, essentially, right? So uh, groundwater moves through aquifers, which are, you know, water underground, and underground is, of course, media that is typically uh, complicated, complex, you know, has a lot of heterogeneity. Uh, meaning, you know, things are varied, right? So there's not just one velocity, there's a bunch of them. That's really where I'm going with this. Uh, so grain size distribution, again, we did entire lectures on this when we looked at porosity um, in that very first course, but you can see that you can have something that's very uh, well sorted, right? So most of the grains are one size and maybe there's a little bit of, you know, something different, or they may be very, you know, widely distributed with a whole range of sizes you know, in the formation. The point is they're always somewhat heterogeneous. There's never kind of one, just one scale, one length scale, one grain size, like perfect spheres in the ground, right? It's always a distribution. Now dispersion comes about uh, from essentially shearing mechanisms, right? So shear flow. And again, on the left-hand side here, I have sort of examples from uh, I guess civil engineering uh, or, you know, shearing is literally the deformation, right, of, let's say, mass, right? So the, the, the beam is shearing when it's bending, for example, right? The bending, the shearing, the distortion. So this is a very common concept uh, in engineering, especially mechanical civil engineering. Uh, here for us, here's another example for flow example, but this is a river. We're not underground yet, uh, but you can see how um, on the sides of the river, so this would be a cross-section of a river, this actually is a cross-section of a river, the Tipicano River, which flows uh, near West Lafayette here, near Purdue, where I took those data, I mean these are interpolated, and you can see the red is really the low velocity and the bright yellow, white is the high velocity in the middle, and you can see how the velocity is very very low, you know, near the walls, near the bottom and near the sides of the river, uh, but very fast in the middle, right? There's always a thalveg called a thalveg, like a, a place in the middle that is, you know, deeper and flows faster than the rest of it. And if you look at the velocity profile near the walls or near the bed, this is what they look like, right? It goes faster at the top, slower near the bed. So this is the same thing. The shearing is really this, this idea that if we move this place faster than this place, right, we end up with this stretching here of the water. And because the water has viscosity, right, the water is like, think of it like a gum, if you will, right, that is stuck into a table. And if you try to pull on it, right, if you're moving it, then it stretches, but it never breaks. So there's that uh, uh, zero velocity at the wall. So, you know, it, it's stuck basically uh, on the rocks, but then it flows fast, you know, away from the rocks. And then the shearing is really this distortion of the water, this the spreading of the water, if you will, you know, between that fast velocity and slow velocity, which in turn creates some, um, excuse me, creates some mixing opportunities, right? Because right here, for example, there is concentration gradient and then diffusion can act, right? So if you're exposing this, you know, this, this concentration here to like clean water, let's say this is clean water, and this is, you know, the vault, if you will. Now, if you're exposing a high concentration to a low concentration uh, area, now you have a concentration gradient and um, diffusion can take over and mix. So the more shearing there is, the more mixing there is. And that's literally what we call dispersion, right? This is a definition of dispersion. Now, how is that relevant in uh, porous media? Well, again, I'm taking you back to uh, the very first course, the very first one credit uh, course here in this series. Uh, the groundwater cycle course, and in the lecture 3.6 from Stokes to Poiseuille flow, we looked at these little graphs, and you can see that in a pore, so now this would be a grain here, and a grain here, right, and then a flow in the middle, and we get, you know, 
flow that is typically a Poiseuille flow, meaning it's a parabolic velocity profile. Again, we've talked about all this in previous lectures. But that means that there's, again, low velocity near the wall and fast velocities, you know, near the middle of the pore, and then there's, which means there is shearing. As, as long as there is, you know, velocity differences, that is equivalent to a shearing, which is, in turn, you know, give some dispersion, give some mixing mechanism in that uh, system. Now, another important aspect of dispersion is that not only within a pore we have that Poiseuille distribution of velocities, but we also have a distribution of pores because of the heterogeneity of the medium, right? So we have small pores here, and let's say big pores here, right? So there's a lot faster velocities in those larger pores. So let's go here, maybe that's a little more obvious. So if you look at this pore here, and I don't know why this equation is like this, you know, versus this pore, let's say here, you can see how there's a lot more flux or velocity in that large pore compared to that small pore. So again, we have a distribution of velocities, right? So there's slow velocities in those small pores and fast velocities in those macro pores, if you will. So there's a distribution of velocities that in turn create dispersion and create mixing in that formation. So a lot of the transport, you know, in groundwater is really due to that dispersive mixing or really due to the different um, advective fluxes, you know, in different places. Now, if we look at larger scale, there's always a representative uh, volume. And I, again, talked about this in our first course. But if we look at, if we're averaging over some distance, so here are volumes, right? And you can see on the left-hand side, you take a little volume, then you take a larger volume, and then a larger volume, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you keep increasing the volume over which you're averaging some property, let's say porosity, right, after some, you know, some volume, you know, there's some volume that kind of samples all that variability, and you get kind of an average porosity, right? So same thing for velocity or the dispersion coefficient. You know, at some scale, you can think of, velocity as, as being represented by sort of the average velocity over the formation and the dispersion coefficient being the result of, you know, all that heterogeneity, you know, mixing uh, the dispersion coefficient ends up being, you know, somewhat constant at some large, vo large enough volume. Now, all of this leads us to what we call the uh, advection dispersion uh, equations now. So again, it's not diffusion anymore, it's really dispersion doing the mixing. But you can see in the math that it's all the same, right? So it's a different mechanism because it's like velocity differences that really mix um, or create those, you know, added concentration gradients that then diffusion sort of uh, tries to neutralize. So really diffusion is still at the molecular scale. Diffusion is still the mixing process, but it's the fact that there's different velocities that sort of accelerates the mixing. Uh, and again, in the math, we can see that it's the exact same uh, equation as before, and a note here that velocity, again, if, you, if we're adver averaging over a volume that is big enough, so there's some sort of an average velocity, then velocity doesn't depend on um, space anymore. It's, it's, you know, it's not variable anymore because we've averaged it out. We're taking a volume that, so there's an assumed constant velocity or somewhat constant velocity, even though it's the result of a bunch of different velocities, we average them out. So velocity is now constant, and we can take it out of the differential again, right? So in the end, we get this equation here, which is the advection dispersion equation, the classic advection dispersion equation, where there's a single dispersion coefficient and a single velocity, if you will, which are really average, you know, quantities uh, characteristic of the transport. Okay, so this is all the introductory uh, lectures on diffusion, then advection, and then dispersion. Uh, in the next uh, series of lectures, we will see how we can solve uh, the advection dispersion equation, uh, find the analytical solution, and then use it in uh, transport problems in aquifers. Thank you.